Heyo, it is Reldan again, and we are having another segment. Um, I did, in fact, win the last two games, so went from four and two to five and two to six and two, and here we are. Um, going to see if this warrior deck can go all the way. I mean, who knows? If, if you can win two in a row, why not win three more in a row? And uh, then I can complete my personal achievement of trying to um, have a nine-win arena um, with every class. Um, I am finding this to be a pretty good arena run so far if uh, for no other reason than I really like how many different classes I've actually been able to come up against. Um, we're going to drop. I mean, I like the Spellbreaker. I like the Smith. I want some cheaper stuff, though. Um, Iron Fur Gris Grizzly gets a, gets a pass in my book because... <coughs> well, I'm going to be swinging a lot early on this game, so... Oh, and there's a Spellbreaker back. Um, one of the things, I mean, I, I don't know if I've talked about it before, but just in terms of the very, very loose mulliganing rules in this, where it's like, discard whatever you want and trade it for whatever else you want. Um, you really want to take advantage of that, because, I mean, what you're really doing, I mean, if, if your deck is properly built, then, I mean, honestly, any, with few exceptions, just about any of your cards should be pretty much as good as any of your other cards. So, I mean, you shouldn't be, you shouldn't have too much of a issue with, uh, I mean, if you can, if you can basically discard a card to draw a different card, um, I mean, be, get rid of anything that you don't see yourself using in the first few turns, unless it's some sort of like super awesome legendary craziness card. Okay. Well, I mean, let's see. Pretty much just going to be feeding uh, feeding the grinder here, but I just don't really see any other way around it. So we'll go ahead and feed the Iron Fur Grizzly to him. What I really want to set up is getting the Spiteful Smith with the War Axe with the upgrade and having basically, what would that be, three swings with a six damage weapon. That, that's something where, um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, if, if my hero can deal 18 damage, I mean, it's practically like he's killing them himself. I mean, that's, uh, certainly is a uh, is a benefit so this will be the turn that will decide whether or not I manage to pull off this uh, particular brand of magic and can he kill my spiteful Smith because if not then he's gonna be in a world of hurt but Killing a 4-6 on turn 5 is really... I mean, it's not the easiest thing in the world. There are some classes that could do it. Rogue could assassinate it. Um, I'm trying to think, yeah, I mean, without a spell power boost or something like that, though, I mean, there there are very few spells that deal that much damage um, at this co at this kind of a cost. Let me I guess Warlock can do it because they've got that uh, crazy four damage for zero mana, and then they could like mortal coil it or drain life it or something. But um, Paladin, I mean, their their big way of doing it would be to would typically just be that they'd uh, oh, good divine shield. I it's funny because I, I I just really I really don't care about that because that's yeah that's just not something I care about really at all. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and get the benefit from this. I am going to spell break his thing. I don't want him drawing any more cards, um, and that pretty much counters that stupid divine shield. Um, 
I mean, the upgrade will still be good next turn. I'm not overly worried about that. If anything, it will be a little bit more of a surprise. I mean, we're kind of just going all out. I mean, this this is an area where um, I probably can win this game if I can draw my mortal strike. Handle it. My eyes are open. He is seriously debating whether he needs to trade. Probably a good choice on his part. Okay, so we... We're going to go do this whole Mad Bomber thing and see what happens. So two and two. Mad Bomber does a great job, and then does a crappy job, and then does a great job again. Um, I am not going to be one to complain. Upgrade. We'll hit him, and... Let's see. Consecration. That is the thing that I really don't want to deal with right now. So, as much as it pains me, um, we're going to hold a guy back. I, I, he's got so many cards in hand, I am fully expecting to see that spell. And if he had it, now would be the turn he would play it. So, we'll know. And that answers that question. He does not have a consecration. Reporting for duty. That's a, uh, a delicious, delicious uh, card to have drawn. I have no time for games. And. I know he doesn't have a consecration. We're gonna let do this. Now he might have the spell that decreases the health of a creature down to one. And that would be the one spell he would really, 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 really need to have right now. Because that's the one thing he could do that would let him counter Sylvanas um, pretty handily. Because let he'd trade think. and then he'd have no creatures left for me to actually steal. But barring that, he's in trouble. So if he does have that spell, then he's doing some interesting calculations right now. He might also have the thing that lets that just does like eight random damage um, for six mana, and um, at that point he would just be really hoping that he has the same kind of magic luck that my Mad Bomber did. I wonder. In all seriousness, though, I mean, that, that Mad Bomber was stupid. I mean, there, there really was no good reason for it to... I mean, two mana for a 3-2 three, that kills a 3-3. Three, three, I mean, I don't know. All this... All, the, the random effects in this game just drive me batty because, I mean, there, there's no feasible way you can plan around them or really think about them or... I mean, they're, they're just so over the top. Okay, so 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. That is so close to being awesome, and yet somehow not awesome. Coming through. I'm trying to think. What could he do? I mean, he gets a lot of guys. He can give them all plus one. I mean, in fact, that would probably be the most likely thing he would be looking at doing. Let none survive. No, I think I think I think I'm just gonna go for it. But um, let's see. Look at one. 
So we'll see if he can, uh, if he's got the cards to counter everything and hit me for 27 before. <laughs> it's kind of an interesting situation right now because he's going to have to sacrifice his entire board so that I don't get something back from Sylvanas. And then he has to, and then basically the question is, can he kill me before, with, with especially with me, I'm um, basically regenerating the equivalent of two life a turn for the rest of the game before I draw something that can deal one point of damage to him, which could be, uh, or seven, stupid paladins. For the time being, I'm going to try to stockpile some creatures because I have three Warsong Commanders in my deck. And my way of killing him, um, basically feeding his uh, feeding his guys um, with my guys without the potential to actually deal any damage to him, not very useful. But uh, me drawing a Warsong Commander and then being able to kind of uh, blitz him in one turn, um, that's way more feasible. Silvermoon shall not fall. My shield for Argon. Yeah, we will get the Gnomish Inventor out there because a card's a card. Yeah, this is really not looking so good with um, him getting, now, now that he's getting the taunt out there. Was not really expecting to see the Guardian of Kings. Um, well played. Yep, this will be it. Oh, that was a good game. Um, definitely a few things. I mean, definitely could have done a few things a little bit differently. I mean, if in retrospect, uh, with that whole Guardian of Kings uh, card drop he had, um, would have worked out way more in my interest if I had. What I really needed to do the turn before that was instead of using my heroic attack to get him down to one, it sh I should have just um, killed his 4-4. Four four. That would have put him in a situation where he couldn't kill Sylvanas on the next turn at all. And then if he did drop his Guardian of Kings, then he's kind of in a dicey situation because, um, you know, he has to be careful that if Sylvanas dies that I don't just steal his Guardian of Kings back from him and then kill him with his own guy. I mean, that's pretty much the fear he'd be going through if I had done it. But, yeah, that was certainly a mistake on um, my part. Um, if I had this to do it over again, um, then that's how I would have done it differently. Um, looking at what he has, I mean, there's no guarantee that that would have for sure won me the game, but uh, d definitely uh, I think would have had a better chance. Um, other things, uh, I could have taken a little bit more of a risk. Um, he didn't have a Consecration after all. I could have um, played out my Pint Size Summoner. That would have... Um, since he didn't have any area spells to deal with, um, that would have uh, pretty much given me an extra two damage on him, which would have been enough to kill him. So uh, that was the warrior run, though. I'll I'll take a six and three record with a warrior. I'm not nothing to be ashamed of there. So um, we'll see what class we get next time. Okay, see you later.